One of the worst things about international breaks is it's a break from normal football. And let's face it, no one really likes international football because it just gets in the way. It gets in the way of the real day-to-day -day business. But there has been some speculation, transfer speculation, regarding Celtic this morning um, down in Liverpool, of all places. It looks like if, and it's a big if, because he's not even played a game for Celtic yet, but Liverpool are, are tipped to invite January offers for Nat Phillips, who's on loan to Celtic uh, for a six-month loan period. It could be the fact that Celtic might go in and make him a full-time employee if he kicks on and does well. And the reason, that, the reason behind this is the fact that he's 26 year old. He's only played a couple of times last season. Um, he played a lot more the season before. But when it comes to January, there'll only be 18 months left on his contract. So the fact that he's going into the sort of final end of his contract is a good time for Liverpool to get rid of a, a player that came through their academy and get some money for him. Um, that could potentially be something that Celtic would be interested in if he does well. He says, one way to look, there's a report I'm looking at saying that, you know, by then, um, it's probably a good time for Liverpool to look to try and sell the player, especially if he does well in the Champions League with Celtic. Could it happen in January? I don't know. Will it happen in summer? More possible. There's a bigger possibility of, unless the the fitness of our current defenders um, stays at the same position that it's at just now. Um, I think it's something that Celtic would maybe look at in January, depending if the price is right. You know, uh, could be the fact that they might try and get him for another six months loan, which would take him to the last year of his contract. And when it would probably be with an obligation to buy or an option to buy. Um, I think Liverpool would rather go for an obligation to buy at that late stage. And it all comes down to how well that he plays for Celtic in the next couple of months. He's only played 29 times for Liverpool at senior level. Um, and at 26 year old, you've got to think, you know, 2021 was the last time that he really had any decent run for Liverpool. So you're, you're, going to, you're thinking he's never going to get into the first team. I mean, for one, he's never going to get past Virgil van Dijk on the pitch and get into that first team. So that's a bit of Celtic news this morning. Celtic ladies team and the Celtic women's team, um, they had a bit of heartache. They got put out in penalties. Penalties. They got beat 11-10. Um for their Champions League game. That's a shame for them. And we're going to talk about Celtic players that didn't get a game yesterday. And it shows you how good, it shows you how good the, the Japan team is when Kyogo Furiashi and Dyson Maeda doesn't get into the team at all. Didn't even get off the bench yesterday. Now, the fact that Japan beat Germany 4-1 yesterday um, and the, the stats are unbelievable because Germany had 11 shots on goal and uh, Japan had 14 shots, 11 shots on target. Germany only had three shots on target. Germany had 68% possession, 68% possession, and they still got beat 4-1. 4-1, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's just one of those things where you look at world football and the fact that our best player, you know, our most important player can't even get a game. He never even got off the bench, and neither did Dyson. Shows you how good the Japan team is. You know, the fact that, I mean, they made one, two, three, four, five, six substitutes, is that right? Can't be six, surely. Um, yeah, it probably is because it was a friendly. Um, the fact that they made all those substitutes and... Kyogo and Dyson still didn't make it onto the pitch. Now, people are going to say yeah, Dyson, but I mean, Dyson usually plays up front. The fact that he's been injured, um, it's a surprise that he didn't get some game time just to sort of warm him up a bit. Um, but they've kept him out and they kept Kyogo out of the team. So tell me your thoughts on that and make sure you give the video a big thumbs up and tell me where you are in the world watching the video this Sunday morning. Now, we all know last week that Scott Brown left his job at Fleetwood Town, which was highly disappointing for us as Celtic fans, as we would have liked to see him progress after the way that he did last year. Um, he took to Instagram yesterday, obviously after composing his thoughts and didn't want to be too reactive to the fact that he had just been um, dismissed as head coach of Fleetwood. Um, he took to Instagram and he said, look, he says, um, I'm sad to leave Fleetwood Town 
after only 15 months as head coach. I would like to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to join a club, to join the club last May. Uh, we worked hard through my time at the club. After a challenging start, we continue the club's excellent record in League One. I was fully committed to the club and excited to sign a new contract in the summer. Uh, our ambitions were to build on the 13th place finish last season and our record-breaking FA Cup run, uh, which he managed. Uh, however, it was a disappointing start to the season, which resulted in a situation in which Stephen Whitaker, Barry Nicholson and I have left the club. I would like to thank Stephen, Barry and a few others for their hard support off and on the pitch. I would also like to thank the wider staff, team and club that show up every day to make sure that the team can perform at the highest possible level, says Scott. Scott says the whole group have taken respons responsibility for the performances and poor results in the last month. But I am proud of the success we shared as a team last season and I expect the team to pull together and climb the table soon. I'd like to thank each of the players for their efforts during my time at the club, says Scott Brown. Scott Brown went on to say then, he says, thank to the fans who welcomed me to the club and got behind me last season. I wish the club the very best for the future and I look forward to watching the players progress and the team progress for years to come. I really enjoyed my experience as manager, my first experience as manager, and I look forward to taking what I have learnt at Fleetwood into my next role in football. And that was Scott Brown. Um, it's obviously he's going to get linked with the Hibs job after Hibs sacked their manager. Hibs sacked their manager a lot quicker than what Fleet would do. I would suggest there'll be a bit of Scott Brown, as you know, it is right on his doorstep. It's only probably about 10 minutes to the training town, uh, to the training site from where he stays. Um, but would you advise him to take the Hibs job? I would say no. I, he needs to go back down a level and sort of work his way up if he wants to get to the, the highest level because I think Hibs as a, as, a, as a club can pretty much finish off careers if you ask me personally. But then what do I know about football? I've never played it. I've never managed it. I only talk about it on YouTube. And yes, this is YouTube. It is not a professional platform. So when, when you come on here and you have a dig at me for not being professional enough, um, make sure that you could spell commentating properly. Okay, and we'll leave that at that. Anyway, last up and not least is Chris Boyd. We're going to finish on a high. Chris Boyd, and we know how Chris Boyd likes to boast about everything bad about Celtic and he likes to have a dig about Celtic. Well, he, he couldn't score yesterday against Celtic in an, an old fella's game. In an old fella's game of football, and he couldn't even score again. He's got a record of not being able to score against Celtic. And we'll just uh, let watch the goal. I mean, Rangers. Um, for Chris Commons. It's so under the cosh a bit here. And then Rangers player steals the ball. Right Collins. through to Boydie, who's offside. He turns and he whacks the ball. And he does a Sibo, 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 Sibo. Uh, if you don't know who Sibo was and you can't remember that far back, uh, you're far too young. Um, but anyway, it. Yeah, he misses, and Boydie, if you're going to come on to the TV next week and try and slay anybody, I hope Big Chris Sutton sees this, and I hope Big Chris Sutton gives you absolute pelters for that miss. Uh, Gary Hooper and Chris Commons were rolling back the years, putting in a shift for the game, um, but Chris Boyd at the Masters absolutely skied it. So on that note, it's just another Sunday, up for the morning, you know, Celtic are still top of the league. There's no games this weekend. It's boring. It's actually boring. Can't wait till next week. Anyway, on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world. Let roll up to the party. Roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the 